Okay, this one's about the RGDA ream uh, gas furnace. Okay, this is about one of the kind of morphodite furnaces. Again, this thing was made uh, probably about 1986, maybe as late as 88. Uh, it's a uh, ream. And uh, notice it advertises its hot surface ignition. This was actually a 70% furnace. They put a uh, little better heat exchangers in these things. They still used draft hoods and they did not have inducers. But they put hot surface ignition in them. And these furnaces were used for just a a couple of years really. They weren't they weren't too long. Few interesting things about these that I kind of wanted to uh, to show and demonstrate. Okay, before we get too far, I wanted to point out just a few things on uh, on this furnace. One, this is still a draft hood appliance. This has a draft hood right here, and it has something on the draft hood that I haven't shown before. And let's take a look at what it is. Okay, what we're looking at here, this is your draft hood right here. And I wanted to point out this little part right there. That is a high temperature limit. It's manual reset. And it's called a draft hood spilling switch. If there is gases spilling out this way. See the gases should be going from right up in here. They should be going straight up into the vent pipe. If they start coming down this way they're going to hit this switch and they're going to kick the switch off. And of course anytime you have draft hood spillage for any length of time that's a, a hazard because it could create carbon monoxide in the house. So uh, they put these draft hood switches, switches in a lot of the later draft hood model appliances before they got rid of the draft hood altogether. But that thing may kick off and you may not even know it's there. So it may be quite a little merry run you do trying to find that silly thing. But they are located, uh, sometimes they're located like that, sometimes they're right up here. Uh, I've had them located right here. So um, that is a draft hood switch. Another thing I wanted to point out is there is a uh, uh, rollout switch here. It's located right here. Uh, a lot of furnaces have the rollout switches. You've seen them on some other ones I've done, but just note where it is. It's right above where the uh, burners are, uh, right down there. So if there's a roll out, that's supposed to kick off, and again, that is manual reset. I've taken the cover off the burner, and you can see we got the three burners here, 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 and here. Uh, and the hot surface ignite is right here. And I'll be showing how that cycles here uh, as we move along. But it has one other interesting part on it. Okay, this would normally be just a pilot tube. And this gas valve is a little bit odd. I'm not exactly sure how it does it. But that pilot tube, when the gas comes on, when power is placed across these two terminals, this is the first part that, op that gas comes through. And if you look down there, you can see the pilot tube goes down here and then there's kind of a little flame spreader thing. Well that comes on before the burners comes on. It actually proves the flame. This, this thing has a little bit of an odd type of flame safety. It does not use a flame rod. It uses the hot surface igniter as the flame rod. Let's see how that works. Okay, here's your hot surface igniters on. Now you notice the gas passed through this little line and just lit that little spreader thing across there. Now that's proven flame. 
Now here goes your main flame coming on. So the uh, what seems to be happening here is this pipe along here is going to the bottom of the flame rod and it's uh, or bottom to the hot surface igniter. This flame here is going across to the hot surface igniter. It's coming on first. It's proving flame. And after a delay, the main gas comes off. Okay, that's the first one on this ream. I'll do a couple more because there's a couple of other interesting components in this thing.